can see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Monday, December 25th, 2023, and this is episode 595 of the Lots Project podcast, where we're defying norms and designing freedom. Today's episode is titled Christmas Morning Hangout and Chat, and we will be doing just that. I have my beautiful bride with me this morning. She doesn't have to work, and she said that, hey, why not? She'll come on and chat with us. And so here we are. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. I hope everybody's doing good. James in early with a uh, with a good joke with a good joke. Corey, Corey appreciated it and gave it a little chuckle when that came in. MSU rifle. Good morning. Good morning. And Jim, how are we doing down there in Florida? We got pouring rain here uh at the moment guys so if we blip out if internet is shitty uh i apologize it is like downpouring rain uh here in tennessee on christmas morning so how's the weather where you guys are how is the weather where you are ah drinking a little breakfast blend this morning it is fantastic i know brian sent out special dark roast and it just keeps getting harder out there doesn't it uh, Brian sent special dark roast for Christmas, and um, I may have gifted it along. I may have gifted the dark along. I uh, that's just not my thing. It's not my thing. So we spread the cheer to um, to the post office lady that handles all our packages all the time and uh, takes care of us very well. So I thought I would. Uh... Oh God, James! James is on a roll with the 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 priest jokes here on Christmas morning. (laughs) Go figure, go figure. Uh, So this morning, I just wanted to jump on. I am trying to stay on track to uh, hit 600 uh, by the beginning of the year. Corey is going to pop on. uh, I think you said you, this is going to be twice within a week. Uh, She's going to pop on next Sunday with us. And uh, we're going to do a New Year's Eve special on a, on a special day too. At least today is a normal, a normal show, but I had to miss a day back when I was sick there. And we're going to do a, a bonus show bonus on New Year's Eve. So yeah, we need to stay on the, on the, on the, <laughs> what? <laughs> we need to stay on track to get to 600. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why we're here on Christmas and uh, hanging out with you guys. So, how's everybody's Christmas morning going? Oh, he answered. That's what you're laughing at. <laughs> yes. Uh, good morning, James. How are we doing? <laughs> Jim says it's 66 and clouding up, expecting some rain. Yeah, I think you're probably going to get the bottom of this uh, this monstrosity that's coming through here. I think Corey said it's supposed to rain all day and then get cold and the rest of the week it's supposed to get a little colder but it seems like it's been a pretty warm christmas from to everybody we talked to we talked to family in minnesota yesterday and it was 50 and raining they were not happy that they haven't been able to get out ice fishing or doing anything in the winter activities and that it was actually colder on thanksgiving and uh halloween colder than christmas so yeah it is what it is. Weird, weird, weird year, guys. And uh, I don't know. I try to look back and think back of the the years that it was warm on Christmas. And didn't we just get absolutely pounded with cold, bitter, bitter cold in January and February? Isn't that kind of how it, and then it, it snowed forever those years until like it felt like June? <laughs> March is always the snowiest month up there. March is always the snowiest month. James says it's 45 there. That's that's typically uh, a lot colder than that, correct, James? You're up in Michigan. I would I have to think that Christmas Christmas in Michigan has got to be usually colder than 45, but I don't know. If you notice the the background's gone, the our uh, our sheets gone yesterday. I was working on uh, I was working on getting ready to just just finally was uh, figured out what setup I wanted to use for recording the Jade videos. And it just went, boom, just dropped half of it. (laughs) 
only half of it. One of the hooks is one of the hooks is so solid. I like hung on it. Like I didn't hang on it. Not my, my not my fat ass would have pulled the roof down of the camper, but I, I pulled on it pretty hard and it uh, it wouldn't come off. And I don't know if I didn't clean the surface of the other one enough or what was going on there. I imagine that's what it is. But all of a sudden it just came swinging behind me. And I was like, what was that? Or it's like your thing fell down. <laughs> so uh, I did get the vi the Jade videos recorded. Uh, I did not get them edited 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 up. Uh, Corey wanted to watch the movies last night, and uh, it was Christmas Eve, and so we uh, we spent some time together. Sorry guys, sorry guys, but they are they are recorded. I wouldn't have been able to post the last one because of network fees. I, I chose a very, 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 very low fee for my um, my transfer back to to strike from Jade, and it's still pending. So I have to ride that one out because I did expose a lot of uh, a lot of information on that hardware wallet, and uh, if it if it reverts, someone would be able to just grab that. It's not a significant amount of money or anything or Bitcoin, excuse me. It's not a significant amount, but uh, I'm just going to wait till it clears factory reset the thing and then post it. But there is plenty of videos. I think I shot five, five different videos. So there's plenty of them that can go up before that transaction goes through. And if it gets hung up and doesn't process for some reason, I will just, uh, I'll just get them up there. So trying to big push uh, here the last week of the year. If you get Christmas money today and you're looking to uh, pick up some Bitcoin and looking to secure it, definitely consider it, Jade. I'm, I'm pushing hard towards the end of Q4. Uh, to wrap that up, it's been a very good quarter. I've been very excited about it. And I actually got some swag on the way because of uh, because of the performance of the Jade sales. So that's cool. That should be here in the next week or so. And um, James has used what I was donating to the drawing. I'm not sure what that means. Use it for what? <laughs> Jim says you ordered yours. Nice. Nice. So that's there. That's coming out. Uh, and I'm hoping that Q1 next, next uh, Q124 is even, even bigger. Cause that's, that's a pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited about it. It is a, it's a pretty cool product. I, I definitely have more videos to make as I was using it. I realized, uh, oh, the one sat. I actually, I think I, uh, I think I ended up, because I was caught off guard sending the Bitcoin off the Jade uh, back to Strike. And Strike has an option where you can pick your fees. Uh, it, it was uh, like, and it wasn't bad yesterday. It really wasn't, except I was sending like $15 and it was going to cost me six extra to send it immediately. It was like four. Do you remember you're listening while I was doing that? No. <laughs> I'm oh, she had her headphones in. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was four to be within an hour. And then free strike is really cool because it's free uh, to send in under 24 hours. But I didn't want to wait to do the video. So I, I picked like the $4 one, sent it over. It showed up in like 20 minutes. And then when I went to send it back, I forgot about the fees and coming out of uh, coming out of the, the Blockstream green ecosystem there, you can also pick your fees. Well, I'm trying to do it on a screen record and a video of the hardware wallet separate and filming myself with a, a third camera. And I look down and I'm like, oh, shit, I've never really I've, I've, I've sent things. But when I was messing with the Jade fees were OK. They weren't like crazy, crazy high. So I was just like, send, send, send it all, send it all and take the fees out of it. And I was only dealing with like five dollars. It was going to be like. I had, I think I received 15 bucks or $16. It was going to be $13 for the fees. $13. And I was going to get $3 back. And I was like, I really like all you guys. I really do. And I want to get these videos out. And I want to get them up. And I want to sell more jades. But that's kind of spendy. That's a lot of Bitcoin just to throw at the wind for um, that. I would have to sell two jades to, to make up for that loss. So I already lost four bucks. It is what it is. So I uh, I swiped down to like zero. It was like one sat. It was like, what fee do you want to pay? It was one sat. And I was like, oh, Jesus, that's going to take forever. And then I tried to bump it up slow without making it ridiculous and get it all to work and figure it out as I was uh, as I was videoing it. 
I don't know. It's pending. It might go through today at some point. If it doesn't go through today or tomorrow, then it is what it is. And it'll probably it'll probably cancel. And then I'll just have to send it again a little uh, more priority and get that out. But videos will be trickling out probably all week as I get them edited. Um, yeah, good stuff. And I realize that there's more that I have to do tomorrow. So uh jim says withdrawing from fold has been stupid yeah network is super congested every app uh every app that i opened yesterday actually i think it was the green um software wallet there's a big banner that says uh fees are super high be sure to double check before you withdraw <laughs> and it's just man it, that's what happens that's what happens when uh when things get popular so is what it is lightning for the win i uh, i was talking to yozik for a while the one day about bitcoin fees and um wherever he was trying to transfer from i can't remember what he was talking it was i think it was his dca and that he uh it was just ridiculous to transfer it and i realized that strike now that they have lightning wallet and the 24 hour wait option if you have your bitcoin in lightning and you want to get it on chain for basically for free, you can send Lightning to your strike address. You receive it. It's just like Wallet of Satoshi was where it, it comes in as Lightning and then it has the option of going out on chain or as Lightning. And if you pick that 24 hour, like if you're not in a hurry, it's zero fees. So basically you send it for on Lightning, there's very, very, very little fees. You send it out. Uh, you receive it in your own wallet on strike and then you send it out at uh, low priority 24 hour uh, wait time and there's zero fees and that comes on chain. So a little hack for uh, getting around fees. If you got some stuff in lightning, you want to move around. So uh, for what it's worth, for what it's worth. But it's Christmas. It's Christmas. I brought Corey on. I see her over there gazing and uh, and and she's just about ready to roll over and drink her tea and watch TikToks because I'm talking crypto and she doesn't <laughs> she doesn't she knows enough she knows enough that uh she knows who to ask if if something happened to me she'd know who to ask to uh, go through all of my stuff to figure out uh, what's going on so anyway let's uh let's talk christmas let's talk christmas i got uh i got some things on the list here if you guys have any christmas questions any christmas related thoughts or questions in the comments you want us to look at or talk about put Put the least the beginning in caps so I can find it. Chad isn't too crazy this morning, but uh, if you do have anything you want us to talk about, let us know, and we will do that. But um, what do I have on my list? I don't even know how long we're gonna hang out this morning. Like it's it's uh, it is what it is. Um, I already talked about uh, the breakfast blend. It's it's great. It's great, guys. As always. Um, First one on the list I had was uh, Christmas traditions. Any of your favorites? Did you have any favorite tr Christmas traditions as a child? Uh, anything that uh, you wish you you could still do, or you uh, were very happy about that you did that uh, that maybe we'll have to rekindle at some point? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would redo any of my Christmas traditions that we had, but we did have a lot. We uh, every year we put up the tree and had eggnog and it was a whole family event it was all my brother my parents and i and we did that every year together and every other year me or my brother got to put the angel and or star depending on the year it was different every year um so we swapped back and forth with that <laughs> excuse me so we did that and then on christmas eve every year we did the runaround where we would go to my either my cousin's place or my grandparents' place and do my mom's side of the family. And then we would go after that to the other side, my grand, my dad's side and go to grandma's house and do Thanksgiving with them or Thanksgiving Christmas with them. So. And you, you were all local to each other. Right. Pretty local. Yeah. We were all within probably 20 minutes was the furthest relative that we would travel to. Nice. Nice. So grandma was close. She was only five blocks away. So that was nice. Yeah. I mean, holidays at grandma's at Corey's grandma's house were pretty interesting um let's just say most people started taking the day after off of work not just christmas not just christmas easter <laughs> easter easter, easter when when uh cory 
her mom and sister-in-law and me and everybody started taking the day after Easter off of uh, off of work. And uh, yeah, you knew it was uh, you're free taking days off. Plan that into your vacation <laughs> plan, for the year. Did, you, know, you guys all you guys all take the day after Easter off as one of your normal holidays you take your vacation for. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time at Grandma's house for sure, for sure. Uh, a lot of it I don't recall. <laughs> Well, hey, the 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 rain is letting up, but the Wi-Fi is getting worse. What's going on? Is it is it clouding up or something? Um, traditions. So those were your traditions, kind of around around Christmas. Did you have a um? Did you guys do any specific meal or anything? Yeah, uh, we did. We always had chicken divan for Christmas. That was uh, our Christmas dinner meal. Was chicken divan? It's like a seven layer chicken salad with yeah, like, like I did bake. Like <laughs> I didn't remember that. That was the first time I had ever had it, and uh, it was the I had it every every Christmas. It's good. It was like broccoli and cheese and chicken and mm -hmm. and uh, breading uh, like breadcrumb top and. Yep. It was good. It was good for sure. There's some like cream of chicken soup in there or something like uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, probably. But probably. Uh, when we went to the cousins for Christmas, we had one, we had 10 cousins total. And so five of them all belonged to the same family. My one aunt had five kids. And so we would all pick one of them out of a hat. All the other cousins would pick one of the family out of the hat and we would do a gift swap with just that one cousin. So it wasn't like a crazy amount of presents. We didn't have to buy presents for all the cousins. It was just one. Everyone got one person that they bought for. Do you want to come in here? Clyde wants to say Merry Christmas. Clyde says Merry Christmas. <laughs> Walter, Walter's over. Um, Walter's over here on the ground next to us. Skishy's over there. They all got super wet uh, going out in this morning, so Corey got to dry them off. Um, we would go to. Hold on. Talk for a second. I have to read this paragraph. <laughs> and then Christmas. Christmas Eve, my grandparents, we had another set of grandparents that lived um, about two hours north of us, and they would come down and stay with us for Christmas. So they would come down Christmas Eve, and then they would stay. So they were always at our house Christmas Day with us as well. And it was nice to have them around every Christmas. It just was part of part of Christmas for us. Grandma and Grandpa were always at our house for Christmas, so... Yeah, even even until uh, even when we were together later in uh, later in, um, they were always there. And it wasn't that, that... until Grandma passed away that Grandpa stopped coming. Which maybe he didn't want to come in he the didn't. first place. He said he wanted to be alone. He said I spent all of my Christmases full, my house full of people and chaos, and I just want it to be quiet for Christmas. And I mean, so that's the man, what he did the... for the last few Christmases after Grandma died. The man was ninety plus years old, and he had uh, he had done what he had done for his whole life. And uh, yeah, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I didn't blame him at all. I thought it was a great idea. He just wanted to enjoy the day. <laughs> oh, James! Uh, James was saying that uh, they went to his mom's side, and his mom's side hated his dad. Uh, so they had a rule that they couldn't fight with his dad. So they took it out on James, and so then James's dad was mad because they were there just to be, and so he took it out on James. Everybody took it out on James uh, because they had to go to Christmas. Eh, you know, it is. It is what it is. Morning, Pip. How we doing? Thanks for swinging in. Merry Christmas to you. And happy Monday. Is the car dealership open on Christmas? A lot of people out getting their, uh, picking up their new cars and putting the bow on and putting it in the, in the driveway. Ooh, is that what you got me? Yep. <laughs> yep. I got you a second vehicle. So um, I don't know how we're going to uh, move with it, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, traditions, uh, as far as we had, um, we would do the tree. Uh, obviously, we do the tree. We would go get, we did a live tree every year. We would go to the same um, Morning Blakesley Acres. Thanks for stopping in. Um, <laughs> Pip says he pulled down the big bows the other day. Uh, is that something that people actually do? Have you known anybody that's ever like given a car for Christmas? Like, hey, here you go. Here's a financial obligation for the next five years. Like, I think my boss's husband bought her a car for Christmas. Hopefully, but she still drives. Like, I mean, it's been she's driving it to the ground, uh, brand new. Yeah. But 
Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Yeah. Anyway, we used to go to the same same tree lot every year. Go get a tree, bring it home. Uh, <laughs> uh, bring it home and uh, decorate it. At 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 certain age, like I got old enough that I ended up putting it in the stand, bringing it in, and then we would uh, we'd sit and decorate as a as a family. Uh, other than that, I remember Christmas Eve dinner was always steak and shrimp. Uh, hang out and hang out with the family. Christmas morning we hung out as a family, and then every Christmas afternoon we would go to my grandmother's house where there were. Um, my mom had three brothers and sisters, and so it was the brothers and all the cousins and the aunts and uncles, and we'd go hang out there and eat dinner. And that's kind of what it was. Our our grandma was, um, that grandma was like a half an hour away, 40 minutes away, and then my other side of the family were all a lot farther, two, three hours away. So that wasn't, um, we didn't go to that family for Christmas. So that was pretty much um, cut and dried for us. It was... Uh, short and sweet and it was uh it was was what it was what it was you mentioned that you had a real tree we always had the fake tree so oh. our tradition was dad would go out to the garage and pull it out of the rafters <laughs> and it would smell like mothballs and all of that <laughs> and the box was all barely taped together same box the whole year you know same tree for i don't think they bought a new one until i was in high school so every year you'd put the tree together and like try to make it look like a tree bend all the branch oh. wires and like try to fill it in where it was missing stuff and eventually the lights went out and you had to see so had dead lights around the tree that just didn't light. <laughs> nice. Yeah. My mom, uh, I think this was before I ended up leaving for college or anything. We had, we would have two Christmas trees. We would have a artificial one in the front room in the window um, that the, the street could see. And then we would have a real one in the back room where it was like our living room where the family was. So, yeah, we had the best of both worlds. <laughs> what about us? Do we have any um, do we have any Christmas traditions that you would say other than uh, Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog and uh, just being happy with each other? Yeah, I mean, for a long time we were together. We kind of kept up my family traditions because we were in that in the same state, so we just went along and kind of did that same thing um, until just a few years before we left. Yeah, it got to be too much because we were, we had moved away and we were doing still that same uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas, but it was a back and forth of about a three hour round trip both days. And it got to be where it just didn't, it didn't make sense because um, those grandparents were gone. That was, that was the big thing when I met you was one set of grandparents on Christmas Eve, one set of grandparents and, you know, Pat came over um from christmas from christmas day but it was kind of like the split like it was different people as the older generation started to not be around um it just it it, it was just hanging out with my my immediate family two days in a row and it was a long drive to do the same thing two days in a row right right, right. that's kind of what it got down to and so the last two i think two years that we were up at the farm we just went one day and then my brother also had kids during that time yeah. and so they kind of wanted to do their own family christmas at their house you know have the kids wake up and do the santa and all that stuff so it just got to be where we weren't going two days and then we moved <laughs> when we were in texas we did not attend <laughs> yeah it was it was tough <laughs> to get back. Fly back for christmas. it was tough to get back for christmas I mean, if i recall last year it was kind of cold uh for christmas and we were very comfortable yeah. we were very comfortable in texas with our solar christmas lights <laughs> on the camper um we do that, that is we do i guess i guess that is one of our things is we do decorate still it do doesn't matter where we're at we do have the solar christmas lights that we can throw on the camper and last um, year we made a tree Last year we did make a little tree uh, and had that outside. We made that out of Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. This year we didn't make the Christmas tree, uh, but uh, we do have the lights up. Good morning, Hunter. Thanks for swinging in over on Twitch. I appreciate it. Uh, how's your Christmas morning going? Merry Christmas to you. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Tradition-wise, we don't have any eggnog for today. We don't have any peppermint bark left for today. We okay, so let's talk about the let's talk about the booze. Let's talk about the booze. Christmas booze. Christmas booze. So Corey 
mention that growing up she used to get drunk when they put the christmas tree up as a kid um and drink all sorts of eggnog oh you drank it without booze yeah that's uh, not as a kid mm. it's not alcohol oh yeah. okay, okay believe it or not anyway she got hooked on eggnog and as a, as an adult i met her well as a young adult i met her hey good morning loco it is after christmas oh no christmas evening there i i suppose merry christmas to you i hope you had a very nice holiday and uh thanks for swinging in uh, so she got addicted to, to eggnog, addicted, uh, seasonally addicted. She doesn't really, wait a second. We do get it other times of the year. Sometimes when, when we see it, when we see it. <laughs> anyway, uh, she got addicted to eggnog. And so, um, we, he got me to try it. Like it wasn't anything that I ever drank growing up. Like I don't remember having it as a kid. Maybe I didn't, didn't like it. Maybe it just I don't remember um, ever drinking it. As a bartender, I had to try it. It was kind of like part of the deal around the holidays, along with some other things. But when I met Corey, she's like, we would go to Christmas at her parents' house. It was always there. Uh, they lived next door to a liquor store, so there was always resupply. That probably why probably why we always took the day after the holidays off is because there was a liquor store within five feet of uh, their house and then we were just going around the corner to grandma's but anyway she got me to try eggnog and i liked it and um i don't know if we originally were drinking the oh yeah okay okay it's always been always been pennsylvania dutch uh eggnog very good very good it it, it doesn't put a hammer down on you like you have to drink a lot of it to get drunk drunk <laughs> maybe not <laughs> maybe not um <laughs> i don't think it takes that much but <laughs> it, i mean it's good it tastes great and and so that's what i originally started drinking um when i met her and so then we've experimented when we couldn't find it like last year in texas we couldn't find it for the longest time so we tried I, we tried evan williams last year I, yeah i remember i knew it was something i couldn't remember we tried uh, the evan williams we weren't a fan this year we actually found the pennsylvania dutch at a liquor store that we stopped by wine at and so we bought them out and um then we went back and they only had the evan williams they were out of the pennsylvania dutch we were sorely disappointed because we weren't going to buy the evan williams anymore well they also had this stuff sitting right next to the empty shelf of eggnog that was pennsylvania dutch but it was a different flavor what flavor was uh, it? peppermint bark peppermint bark peppermint bark uh jim says eggnog is too rich to drink a lot not if you try hard not if you try hard it does enough. get a little thick i agree <laughs> it gets a little thick uh and so we pick up the peppermint bark and uh man it is a, it is a quality substitute yeah. i i was uh i was thoroughly impressed i almost like it a little bit better than the eggnog myself but i steep i i, I have to say that i wasn't drinking it since i was a kid <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure it wasn't the Pennsylvania Dutch? Is that why the Christmas tree looks so good every year and the lights were broken? Yeah, the stuff we got came in a carton, like an old school milk. Oh like yeah, yeah, thing. with the candy canes on it. Mm-hmm. Yep, we get it at Super Value. <laughs> uh, Loco says only had the supermarket non-alcoholic eggnog. Yeah, that's what we had as a kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And Backwoods Butcher, good morning, Merry Christmas, man. How was how was uh, how was Christmas morning with the girls? I hope it was uh, fantastic and uh, you enjoyed every minute of it. And you're probably out uh, having a cigarette and a Red Bull before you have to put those toys together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, so that is um, that is Christmas booze. Uh, I think we do have some wine left uh, for this evening, so I'm sure Corey and I will have an early um have an early afternoon and start having um we don't mill we don't make our own eggnog we don't um uh, we don't make our own <laughs> backwards says i nailed it i nailed it taking a break from putting those damn toys together i hey how many uh how many knives did you go through trying to get the packaging open did you have to bust out the screwdriver and things like that because i remember but right before we left, we were getting the niece and nephew gifts and like you had to get a screwdriver out to unscrew the packaging. It's like, holy shit. Um, that's great for like a dreidel or something. Oh, wait, that's not they for They were Christmas. really stuck in there, those toys. I couldn't believe. Yeah, the packaging was insane. 
Hunter says, I don't know about the Dutch or whatever. Y'all don't make it. No, we do not make our own eggnog. Too lazy for that. <laughs> How do you make it? Do you like, is it made out of eggs? Yeah, I don't, I've never known anyone that made their own. I have heard that people have made it, but I don't know anyone that's ever made it. So I'm not sure exactly. Hmm. That would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back with Butcher says I'm about to Disney montage my way through cooking Christmas dinner. What are you having for dinner tonight? What are you having? We were talking earlier about tra Christmas traditions. Um, I don't necessarily recall what we did Christmas Day. I'm sure there was something like I just don't like. I'm now into my mid 40s. I'm an old man. I probably have a little bit of a little bit of uh, memory loss here and there, and I don't remember what um what we had on christmas day but definitely steak and shrimp on christmas eve chris or uh, chicken devon on christmas night where you were mm -hmm. hmm. on christmas eve we mostly just did hors d'oeuvres most of the day yeah like, all it was day. like just plates and plates of different hors d'oeuvres all day long and then that night we would eat dinner gum pats and it was usually ham holy shit how many people do you have at your house, Kyle? Jesus. Look, he's got all that right he's there. He's having prime rib, prime rib, pork roast, pheasant, and dumplings. Almost everything we're having, I killed or processed. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Jim says it's like a thin custard. Um, James says I can make a meal out of deviled eggs. Oh, man. When we were on the farm... Uh, and we had our own chickens, the deviled eggs, the egg salad that we make, like people were very sorely disappointed when we got rid of our chickens. They still tell us about it. And it's they still, nope, they still tell years. us about the chickens. Um, Loco says the nephews were drinking beer, drinking local beer after lunch. My wife had a bottle of uh, Asti chilling in the fridge and the bottle of Bacardi coconut flavored rum waiting to be mixed up sometime during the holidays. Nice. Um, <laughs> you mean wait a second keto uh eggnog isn't keto hunter <laughs> and we have a missing comment i don't know where the missing comment is <laughs> uh kyle says merry christmas murder you need to write a song about that all right kyle you have a great christmas enjoy it with those little girls that you only get so many of them and then they're all gone so even though it might be a little mess, just uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it and uh, think back and remember how much you enjoyed it. So Merry Christmas, man. Have a good one. I'll go catch you later. Um, so we talked about meals. You got a Christmas song you love? Ooh, got a Christmas, Christmas song? song? How about you guys? Anybody out there have a, uh, a favorite Christmas song? There's quite a few of the Christmas songs that I like. I don't know if I have a favorite. Okay, well, think about it. I think I think my favorite Christmas song would probably be um, <laughs> one that I randomly sting around here. You'll look at me like I'm nuts. And uh, I don't know. It'd be like Jingle Bell Rock or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there'd just be some... I'll just start humming a tune. She'll be like, what are you doing? I'm like, sing a Christmas song. Carol of the Bells, that that is a good one. Um, I used to get into like that uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra, those like big, big, powerful Christmas songs. Not necessarily with singing, um, man. And when you bartend, and then again went into uh, the gas station industry, I heard Christmas music from the m October. Really, when I went back into the gas station, I think they started playing Christmas music before Thanksgiving. It was like the day after Halloween, the Christmas music came on. So I learned to really tune it out. Uh, when you work in restaurants, they play it, obviously, uh, from Thanksgiving on, if not earlier. Man, I tried to tune it out. So as far as far um, as far as favorite, I think I just hum in the background. Not Blue Christmas, Elvis Presley. That would have been Grandpa's favorite. Grandpa was an Elvis fan. Pip says, uh, "Drop Dropkick Murphys." They call this Christmas where I'm from. I'm I'm a fan of the Dropkick Murphys. I'm a, I'm all right with that. Um, 
<laughs> just because I can't stand that one. <laughs> You're always walking to grandma's. That's what she'd have on her Elvis. Yep, Elvis yep. Team. All I want for Christmas is you. No, I um, Mariah Carey can cannot be played ever again, and I would be happy about that. I do like that one. The Mariah Carey version. I do like. Yeah, I do like that song. Um, she only I... she only plays it in her headphones. <laughs> I also never worked in a bar or retail or anything like that, so I wasn't Man. forced to have that, but you do hear it a lot when you're out and about, so I can see how it's a little overdone. But. Well, and it was like pop music <laughs> in general, I think, all year round. Like, you would be there, and restaurants just play it on loop. It's worse than the radio. If you think that the radio plays the same songs over and over again, go sit in a bar for like four days in a row, and you'll be able to name the songs that play over and over and over. And then uh, do that for month and month on end. And then it comes to Christmas time and it just really takes you out of the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I always thought the Hippopotamus for Christmas song was funny. Hippopotamus for Christmas. Hippopotamus for Christmas is a good one. Uh, how about uh, how about movies? We talked movies the other day. Movies but um, how about when you were a kid? Ooh, when I was a kid, I loved the Rudolph, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the, clay, the claymation. Is that what it is? Claymation? Yep. Type? Yep, yep, yep. yep. So that was one of my favorites. And we always watched the National Lampoons. That was always. This. He knows it. You can tell the time by what song is playing. <laughs> it's like on a two-day loop or four-day loop, and you can literally tell what time it is by what song plays. Yes, James. <laughs> yes. So you like the claymation, Rudolph? Yeah, that that, was one that has got to be one of my favorites. Uh, Frosty. Frosty. Like Frosty. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, it was kind of like the Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown Christmas was one with the uh, with the Christmas tree, the, the the crappy little Christmas tree that they got. Yeah, yeah, we watched um, that one too all the time. So those were the as a kid, like the ones that I I I wasn't. I, I mentioned on the show when we talked about the movies that I got to see Home Alone in the theater. So it's not like Home Alone was an instant classic, I guess, when it was in the theater. But once you went and saw it in the theater, it's not like you watched it every year. Um, I, I, I believe we watched uh, National Lampoons in the theater because I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think those old cartoons were my favorite, like the Rudolph and Frosty and and uh, Charlie Brown, for sure. Mm, we for sure. Them. <laughs> uh, Loco says Christmas in Hollis. Nice. Nice. By Run DMC. Uh, the Die Hard soundtrack. <laughs> God. Um, Hunter says he doesn't have anything that he has to watch to make or break the holiday season. Well, I mean, we started uh, probably in May watching Christmas music. I, I think we own um like National Lampoons and all of those, so like we'll watch Summer Vacation uh or not na like National Lampoon Summer Vacation, and we'll be like, well, what do you want to watch? And we're both kind of half falling asleep. And I'm like, how about Christmas Vacation? And I'll be like, May. Something. It is what it is. It is what it is. We're uh, we're not really traditional folks here, uh, if you haven't ever been able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know what else I got here. What else do I have on my list? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, do you have any favorite gifts you ever? That was next on my list. Present, present, or something you really wanted and didn't ever get. And I, my, my parents were really good. I, and I think, I think we worked well together. Like I understood kind of the bounds that they were, they were limited by. I didn't ask for things that, um, hopefully I didn't ask for too much that they couldn't get. And I never asked for like a ton of stuff. That was always the difference. My sister would ask for a bunch of stuff and I would ask for one big thing. And uh, you talked about that the same with you and your brother. I was the one that asked for a ton of little a things. A ton of little things. My brother wanted one giant expensive thing. <laughs> uh, and I think that, sh that started kind of in, it would have been probably when I was eight, nine, ten years old. I think my favorite gift I ever got, and it was several years in a row, is I'd get uh, playoff tickets to the Bills games. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Obviously, NFL playoffs are right around now. Sometimes it was just before Christmas, so I'd end up getting it before. But 
I would get a gift that was dependent on the team making the playoffs. And then if they won, I got to go to another game if they had a home game. But that was really cool as a kid to get to go to those playoff games. Uh, if you don't know, the, the Bills, uh, Buffalo Bills, in that time period, went to four Super Bowls in a row, which meant they had a lot of playoff games in Buffalo in January. And so, like, for three years or four years in a row, that was, like, my main Christmas present was uh, tickets to those playoff games when they were at home. Uh, so I think that was probably... That would probably be one that really sticks out um, since it was multiple years. It was something I really liked and enjoyed. And uh, it, it got it, like I got to go into January. That was that was kind of cool. It was my present kind of lasted into the next month. Um, and you never know how many games it was going to be. So I would have to say uh, one that one that, that pops out to mind. I, uh, there were a couple other ones throughout the years, but um, that's definitely one you yeah, I don't know. Um, I never asked for like something that was out of range for my parents to purchase, but I would ask for things that was really hard for them to find unknowingly. Like when I was a kid, my mom will never forget that I asked for a cow. I just wanted like a stuffed animal cow or just a cow. And she said it was like the most impossible toy to find at the time. And she ended up buying a whole barn set with horses and pigs and all sorts of different animals in it because it had a cow in the set. So I asked for things that were just odd and my parents had a hard time finding some of the things that I would ask for because they were so random and it wasn't the super popular toy that all the other kids were asking for. Yeah. I asked for a unicycle, you know, things like that. Just yeah, random, like random weird, things. Weird. Um, do I have a gift? I, I don't recall a favorite gift, but my parents did do something similar up to your playoff tickets and they would buy us tickets to we fest every year oh yeah yeah yeah. So that was kind of a really cool gift because it was an event that we would all go to together i got to participate in that too right. i think as an adult that was probably yeah that was pretty cool every year the uh, three-day thing well, well it turned into day, it yeah. turned into like a week-long thing like, now it's really um, long but but yeah and it was in august it was the first weekend in august so you'd get the you'd get that for christmas and half have eight months to look forward to it and then um they actually had to buy the tickets before the event so we knew if we were getting them in like june for the following <laughs> christmas then we would attend that year's and then at christmas we would get the tickets for the following year um so yeah it was a really long tail cycle and we had to be sure to let them know when we were done going uh because it was like four, 14 months in advance we yeah. had to let them know so yeah, that was uh that was a pretty cool and that, and that started when you were younger, like 13. Yeah, I started going when I was a freshman in high school, so I was probably 15. Um that was our first one and then we went for 11 years before we stopped going. Yeah. Or I did anyway. It got really corporatized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hunter says uh I remember getting a whole bunch of crap and not what I wanted and they would say, "Well, there wasn't enough money." And Hunter was thinking to himself every day that there would have been if you didn't get me all this stuff I didn't want. <laughs> I mean, you make a list for a reason, right? You make a list for a reason. <laughs> Pips, yeah, sports ball, Pip. When I was a kid, I did. I liked the sports ball. And, you know, this time of year, I always uh, I always check in on the scoreboards and the standings. And it's, uh, it's one of those sentimental things. Like, really... Um, 20 years how many years ago would that have been the the late 90s 25 25 years ago no it would have been way more than that 30 30 years ago getting older and older 30 years ago or more um that that would have been in a box under the tree for me so go bills <laughs> did you guys do any like stocking stuff so we always put uh, our stockings out and yeah. then we always did our stockings last we would open our stocking stuff last we do all the presents and all of that first and the stockings came last and it was usually just like candy and my mom always had toothbrushes in there for us because she worked at a dental office so we got a new toothbrush for christmas you even got that as, as we were growing up she yep. still did that and uh loofahs <laughs> and loofahs yep and usually some yep loofahs so, you always got a new loofah. i was like first first year i went to Corey's house for christmas and i had a, a a stocking which was a gallon ziploc bag that busted out she handed it to me i'm looking at it and i'm like 
does my breath stink? And I'm pretty sure I took a shower before I came today, but yeah, it was like a loofah and soap and toothbrush and toothpaste. I'm like, hmm. And then when I stopped getting that, because I moved, you were disappointed. I'm like, I'm get a toothbrush this year. Like, I felt like I should go out and buy myself one just because. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Pip said, or Gingerbread says, Legos. I spent tons on Legos. Yeah, my Legos. brother was a Lego guy, he always got the Lego sets, the ones that were like, This is like Eesh. a spaceship thing, and it was huge. And you built the whole, yeah, yeah, the whole yep. thing. Jim says, Best president ever was getting mini bikes when he was nine and his brother was 12. Uh, <laughs> Christmas went downhill after that. I mean, <laughs> I, I it's kind of tough to beat the mini bike unless you just go like a full bike. Uh, <laughs> Pip said the stocking that my mother knitted me a, at birth is hanging at my desk at work. Uh, I believe my mom still has ours. I believe. I believe. My mom made my stocking as well. My grandmother. Know, my grandmother made ours. Yeah, I believe that my grandmother made ours. Uh, Gingerbread Farm says he's only doing stockings this year. And Hunter said coffee first, then stockings, then gifts. I don't remember. I don't remember if we did the stockings first or last, I do remember we passed out everything and then went around in a circle. So we had one person that was Santa, one person yeah, that's that how was we Santa, rolled. and they got to give the gift and our family did it one at a time. So you would open yours, we'd all watch. And then the next person would open theirs and we'd all watch and see what they got. And yeah, that was all was the way. kind of fun. Cause you got to see what everyone got. Like, yeah. Um, but I did see, I think it might've been, um, <laughs> i think if uh it might have been you that sent it to me the idea of buying yourself gifts i thought that was phenomenal everybody so Corey sent me a, a tiktok and i've always been um i i guess it'd be socially awkward when receiving gifts i think that's i think that's what um that's what you'd call it um I appreciate every gift I've ever gotten, but it, it, I just don't know how to react, I guess. Uh, it just gets awkward sometimes. Maybe because it was too big of a gift or too nice of a gift or something you're not really sure you wanted or needed, but uh, always the, the thought was there. And then you don't know how to react, especially when you get to the point where you're just you're making a list and everything is on your list. So basically, you're just making a shopping list for yourself. Um so this solves all this, this, uh, this new idea. Basically, Christmas, everybody bought themselves something. So you decided how much money you wanted to spend. You decided what you wanted. You decided what you, uh, what you could afford. Uh, and you didn't have the pressure of anybody else's list. You basically wrap your own present. You bring it to Christmas. You all sit around. Everybody has their own presents. They open, you open your present, which obviously you know what it is. And show everybody what you wanted and share that with everyone, what you wanted, why you wanted it. And there is this no awkward exchange of, uh, of exchange of stuff, I guess. I thought it was a pretty cool idea, um, especially for families that may not be at the, the same financial uh, place in life where one might have 15 kids and, and a ton of money and the other one might not have any money and can't afford to buy nice presents or what presents or whatever. Uh, it really takes a lot of pressure because maybe I just want a, uh, maybe I just want a block stream Jade and maybe Corey just wants a new puppy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Different, different, uh, definitely different for us because we don't really do a whole lot anymore. Like, we buy each other whatever, whenever. Like we don't do <laughs> Christmas gifts, we don't do birthday gifts, we don't do Valentine's exchange, nothing. Like, and we never have. We never have. Not from we decided from day when one. We got we, together that that was a waste of our money. If if I want to buy her something, I'll buy her something. If she wants to buy something, she can buy something. And same same for me. Like if we have the money or we have the funds, we just do it. There's we don't need a special day to make it happen. I guess so. Um. Gingerbread Farm says the whole thing started from St. Nicholas dropping coins and socks drying on the line. Nice. Um, Jim says that sounds like a festivist tradition. Look, this is what you should have gotten me. 
<laughs> I love Festivus. Uh, the airing of the grievances will be later this afternoon on um, Telegram chat only. <laughs> We're not recording that one. Um, Pip says, if I showed everyone what I got for myself for Christmas, that's called brandishing. <laughs> well, if it's if it's uh, unloaded, is it brandishing? Unloaded with chamber cleared and uh, and locked open. Um, Hunter says Courtney tells me what I bought her. I mean that's that's basically what it would come down to with us was we would we would probably set a dollar limit for each other and we would just go buy our own gifts like like what do you need Corey what do you need like what do you need that I don't provide for you. <laughs> Hunter so says, some, yes, it's still brandishing. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> some of the people that are harder to buy for, for me anyways, are the nieces and nephews. Because I'm not around them. So I don't yeah. know what they have already. But we do awesome. And I don't know what they want. You know, they're, how old are they? They're like four, two, and how old are the two? Six, seven? Six and seven. Six getting on seven. I think they turn seven. Um, yeah, the birthday is like right after Christmas. Yeah, right? in January. January. Back to back. <laughs> um jim says careful she might say <laughs> uh so that is one thing we should probably we could probably wrap up with this unless people got other questions for us or things they want to talk about uh we are we are phenomenal gift givers gift givers for the nieces and nephews i am i'm going to toot our own horn i am not uh i am not embarrassed to say it but every year we get the best gifts for the kids like I have to say every year the kids like our shit most, the stuff we find. And I think it is a, a combination of not knowing and not having to deal with it. Like, that's another thing. Like, we don't ever look at it and go, oh, man, I don't want to get that for my kid. <laughs> I'm going to have to do all that. I'm going to have to do him. that with them. I'm going to have to pick up after him. I'm going to have to listen to it, anything like that. So we take a we'll take a day, usually a day to buy them all. And we sit and we look at Amazon, then we watch um, we watch YouTube videos, reviewing toys, things like that. And then we just kind of, I think I, I put myself in the mind of a child. Like I try, I'm like, oh, that would be cool. That's not hard for you. Thanks, thanks. I try to put myself back into a, a seven, seven-year-old, six-year-old, five-year-old, and, and thought like, oh man, what would be the coolest thing? And then we get it. And then they're excited. So yesterday we FaceTimed with uh, Corey's side of the family, uh, brother and sister-in-law and niece and nephew and her parents. And they loved our stuff. They loved our stuff. Mm -hmm. Rock and roll. And today I get to, we get to FaceTime with my sister and her two twins. And I'm hoping I got my fingers crossed. Like I got in, I was in charge of the boy. She's got twins, uh, a boy and a girl. I was kind of in charge of the boy. Uh, and we both kind of handled the girl, but uh, but I took lead on the boy, and I'm hoping I'm hoping this year that. Uh, and we did get some ideas from. We do get ideas. Yeah. yeah, we do get general guidance, um, genres or things that they're interested in, and then we take it from there. And hopefully, man, hopefully today it knocks it out of the park. Uh. <laughs> and it's fun to do the FaceTime and get to watch them open it, even though we're not there too see them playing with the stuff but. yeah facetime is cool with the with the nieces and nephews um getting to see them open the stuff is is kind of fun uh we usually do that with my sister uh we get them both like two or three presents and it's 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 a matter of 10 minutes and they have them open so it's uh it's fun to watch them open them for sure pip says hoping to pass along an old tradition i'm gifting an uno deck to the nieces i can still hear the late grandfather saying blue two to you <laughs> and Kyle says, oh, God, there's so much pink here. I don't even want to go down that road with you, sir. I'm hoping that is about all the stuff you bought for your daughters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anything else you got to say, Corey? No, I don't think so. Are you going to read Did your... you get me a Christmas puppy? I didn't get your Christmas oh, puppy. Shoot. There are a lot of puppies around here, though. There are. There are plenty of puppies around here. Um, you know the rules. Uh, no more than one at a time anymore. So no, no, I no two at a time when they were puppies at the same time was a nightmare. That was so difficult for me. 
Plus, I still had one that was just a year old. So, yeah, yeah that was that. by your doing. Yeah, like that was understood when we got them that you're the puppy king. Uh, Jim says, "Is that a new hat?" No, that's just another one I have. I got three of the pull patch hats. Um, this one happens to be full um, flex fit. The other two are match back trucker. One black, one blue. No, not a new hat. I mean, new today, I guess. I guess. I uh, I had been working quite a bit in the blue one, and when I went to do the jade video, I could see the sweat ring around the middle. So I was like, eh, I got to take that one to the laundry this week. And um, so I busted out a different one. But anyway, I uh, we're here at 55 minutes. If you, uh, if you have anything to say, you want to say Merry Christmas? Do you want to read a Christmas poem or anything? <laughs> I will say Merry Christmas, but I don't need to read a poem. You don't have a Christmas poem prepared? Nope. You can't make one up as you go? No. Especially not at this time of the day. <laughs> oh, guys. If you guys don't have anything to say, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. I hope everybody... Um, our, uh, Hunter says, I can't wait to be home, but this RV living <laughs> living isn't bad. You're in an RV right now, Hunter? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Where are you traveling? Where are you traveling? Um, are you traveling for work or are you talking about us? <laughs> I think it's bigger than my first apartment. Okay, so you're in an RV right now, too. Anyway, anyway, we're going to wrap it up, I think. Um, Blockstream Jade video is coming out this week. Corey was uh, patient enough and let me borrow her phone. So I had... Um, so I had... So I had enough cameras to get it done. So hopefully I can splice it all together and make it work. Oh, you're at the in-laws. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Hey, Cap. Cap. Cap Bab. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. I'm glad. Uh, I hope everybody has a, a wonderful day. If you're all alone and uh, you need somebody to talk to, drop into a Telegram group. Don't sit there and be sad. Um, there are plenty of folks out that are out and about on the interwebs and in our groups that will uh, will keep you company for sure. I uh, I know that it can be a lonely day and a sad day, so please definitely reach out. It's not a it is not a fun thing to be alone on one of these days where everybody's talking about family and, and happy. Um, I got my beautiful one here to be with, but we were also there for every one of you that listens and is in all the groups, and I'm sure any of our groups would say the same. So don't be afraid to reach out if you're having a bad day or uh, a little lonely, guys. I appreciate you coming in this morning. That's uh it's fun. It was fun. I enjoy I enjoy the days that she doesn't have to work and she will um and she can come on and I'm looking forward to it next Sunday. We will do a end of the year. So you need to come up with a new year's poem uh between now and then and your goals and your hopes and desires in 2024. So all right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. I hope you have an awesome day. If you're with family, if you're not with family, I hope you have a great day and enjoy the quiet. I mean, maybe that's what you want. Uh, other than that, uh, we will uh, we'll catch back up with you tomorrow. So Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.